So first of all, thank you to Josh for organizing. It's great to take the time. It's great to take the time and the opportunity to, to go a little bit deeper and think and process and reflect on the teachings of Rabbi Nachman of Breslau, especially in light of some of the challenges the life challenges that people have experienced over the past period of time, which, thank God, we're starting in different ways at different levels to emerge from. But in thinking about the teachings of Rabbi Nachman, which are really super deep and far beyond my comprehension, there's one dimension of Rabbi Nachman that stands out in one of many things that's unique to his Torahs and his perspective is the role of stories. Rabbi Nachman, at the end of his life, said that, I want to now share my Torah with you in the form of story. Now, keep in mind that Rabbi Nachman of Breslover, he died so long ago, he died when Abraham Lincoln was one year old. <laughs> but that's, that's a frame of reference that we're dealing with here. And yet, the stories of Rabbi Nachman continue to be retold and re-examined, and he viewed stories as a medium for conveying maybe the deepest stories that he wanted to convey. So this is one such canon of stories. It's a small selection called The Tales of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. This is translated and annotated by Rabbi Steinsaltz, if you're looking for some. If you want a couple of others that don't appear in that, this is Rabbi Arya Kaplan's book on Hasidic masters, so he has a few of Rabbi Nachman's stories in here. But Rabbi Nachman took folk tales, he took uh, fairy tales, he invented his own, and he crafted them to teach very, very deep Torahs, and very, very, very deep teachings of what he wanted us to understand. And so what I'd like to think about tonight is the notion of stories and how we relate to the idea of a story and how it can help us deal with or think about or frame some of the life experiences that we have, especially those that are challenging. So to do that, I want to focus on one line that Rabbi Nachman writes that he taught in Likute Moharan. So Likute Moharan is a collection of Rabbi Nachman's teachings that he gave over to his student, Rabbi Nassim, who was his principal Talmud and scribe, and Rabbi Nassim redacted this, this was during his lifetime, then many other teachings that Rabbi Nassim put to paper, but this was published in Rabbi Nachman's lifetime. This is from the first section, the Kutim Maharan in the first section. In Torah Samach Aleph, this is, the Torah's range varies greatly in terms of length. This is a very relatively long, Torah. So in Os K, in the fifth subsection, he has a comment. He says that Mikol Machlokes Nasa Sefer. That's the line. Mikol Machlokes Nasa Sefer. From every debate, every quarrel, emerges a book, a volume. He's talking before this about machlokas, about differences, and water, main riva, water represents machlokas. Klukta, palge mayim, peleg elokim mole mayim. And then he, he, he just drops this line, that from every machlokas is not the same. So what, what do we understand from that line? What does Rabbi Nachman want us to understand that from every machlokas emerges a sefer, a book? So on a simple level, he tells us, ki ha machlokas hi she'ela v'kusha. A machlokas, a debate, is a parody, right? It's a question and an answer. It's a back and forth. Shemakshin v'sho'al in alav, that the person asks, and inquires, and he responds. 
That's how you answer the question, the challenge. So machlokes is this back and forth, this challenge. Benasib said bechina sefer sheilos uchuvas. Comes out that it turns out that it's a sefer of sheilos uchuvas, of asking and answering. That's what Rabbi Nachman says. That machlokes is the creative force from which a book emerges. And al pipashas that means a book of shilos and chufas. So you go to a library, you'll find the response of the Hassam Sofer, of Moshe Sofer in the 9th century. So that is a form of she'ilo chuva, asking and answering. So that's that's the idea. From every machlokas comes the same. So what does he want to say? Rabbi Nachman, as we said before, told many sipurim. We're going to come back to this word, which is the root samach he resh, a few times tonight. So Rabbi Nachman, we said that he told a lot of sipurim, a lot of stories. But the truth is, is that Rabbi Nachman is not the first person to emphasize the role of stories. In fact, you could argue that on the most pivotal night of the year, the year when we are focused on transmitting everything that we have received to the future generations, the Torah gives us one charge. What are we supposed to do with that Masora? We're supposed to tell it as a story. There's a, there is a mitzvah of Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim, of telling the story of the Exodus. Even though all year round it's Vishinantam Levanecha, that we should sharpen it for our children. But on the night of the Seder, it is, it's a mitzvah l'saker. There's a mitzvah of Sipur telling a story. And not only that, the more you tell, the more grand it is. <coughs> Every night, in a little bit, we're going to say Mincha and Mariv, we're going to recite Kriya Shema, and we're going to have a mitzvah of Zechira Sitzias Mitzrayim. We're going to take a little check mark and remind ourselves that there is Yitzias Mitzrayim. But that zechira is really just building off of the main initial experience of Sipur. You're not going to every night tell the whole story, so you just you just drop a little hint. But the main essence of that experience is a Sipur. It's a story. And the Torah itself, when the Torah wanted to roll out the, the origins of the Jewish people, our spiritual DNA, where it comes from, how it's woven together, he gave it to us in a story. The mysteries of creation, which our cook points out, are impossible to really understand what, what they actually mean. What does it mean that the Rosh Hashanah created the world in seven days? And, and how that, but it's told in a story. So the idea that stories are significant goes way back to the fabric of the giving of the Torah and the transmission of the Torah. So Aleph, we want to understand what does it mean that from every Machlokas, Rabbi Nachman teaches, emerges the Sefer. Number two, how do we understand the significance of Rabbi Nachman's stories and the role of storytelling in Yavas and in our lives as we see that they are central to the Torah experience? And lastly, there is a Pasuk that we're going to focus on tonight in a significant way. Pasuk tells us in Bereshis, Ze Sefer Toldos Adam. This is the book of the events or the chronicles or the happenings of man. And it goes on to explain the Yom Baro Akbarach who created the world, and blah, blah, blah. But the introduction of that caught the eye of the Baal Medrash, of the great rabbinic sages. These sages looked at those words and they said there are many different, deeper and deeper levels of meaning. And that's what Medrash is about. It's about taking a verse and finding the meaning between the lines or between the letters. So that verse, Ze Sefer told us Adam, if I told you it was significant, you would say, okay, it's significant. I got it, right? Well, how significant is it? If someone were to play a game, and say, we surveyed a hundred random people walking on the street here at West Rogers Park. 
how significant would this puzzle be? Well, let's play the game in the reverse. Some of you are familiar, there is a tradition that there was a group of sages who are cited in the introduction to a book called Ein Yaakov. Ein Yaakov is a collection of teachings based on the homiletic sections of the Talmud. And they debated what is the most important pasuk in the Torah. Any of you familiar with this debate in the beginning of the Ein Yaakov? What is the most important pasuk in the Torah? Familiar with this uh, debate? Some say, Rabbi Kiva says, it's a Rabbi Kamocha. Others say it's Estakevis Echotas in the Boker, one sheep in the morning, one sheep in the afternoon. This is very good if you're giving a talk on consistency. So you've got to quote this beginning of the Ein Yaakov. It's quoted as a medrash, but I'm not sure where that medrash is. It's quoted in the beginning of the Ein Yaakov. So you look there, there are a couple of options. But you won't believe this. In the Bereshit's Rabbah, on this Pasuk, it quotes Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva says, well known. Rabbi Akiva says the, the fundamental key principle of Torah is loving your fellow like yourself. And guess what? Ben Azai disagrees. Ben Azai Omer, Ze Sefer Tolos Adam, Ze Torah. You would have never guessed that in a million years. Right? Darshan, what, what is he telling us? Zek Lara Torah, that the Pasuk says, Zeh Sefer told us all them. This is the book of the of the happenings of man. <laughs> what's, what's going on here? It's the third is. So apparently, there's such a thing as the Sefer Tolo Sodom, a book, and the Medrash describes that there is a book that the Rabbon Shalom has. It's a divine book that chronicles all of history from the beginning until the end. And it's one long book. And everybody's found in that book. All the individuals, all the events, all the historical phenomena, there is this very long book that is the Sefer Tolo Sodom. And the truth is, even within Sefer Torah of Sa'adam, there is the Sefer Torah, which tells us the history, the chronicles of the war from Gracious until we stood at the precipice of Eretz Israel. And then you have Sefer Yehoshua, and you have the Nevi Yishonim, Nevi Machronim. There is, there is a Sefer, there is a story of history. And if you look at that historical arc, it doesn't really make one shape. It's kind of like a weird, I don't know what, like a microwave, delta ray, something, right? Like, we start off at the Rebbe Shalom, we, we begin in the Gan Eden, and then we end up expelled from Gan Eden because of a little incident involving a fruit that was either a grape or a wheat. It was not an apple, but it was something. And then we kind of try to dig ourselves out of that hole and then we have a brother who kills his brother, and that's not really. And then you know, so then we then we build a, a civilization that doesn't really go right. And then Avravinu shows up, and he raises, and then he ends up down. And and you see, the story. It's not an arc of history in the traditional sense. There's an arc. There's a safer told us of them, right? There is a beginning of the story, and then there's the end of the story. And as Rav Cook understands. The entirety of this arc is constantly unfolding from the beginning of the Toldos of Adam until the end. But in the middle of that story, there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of things that are challenging. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of things that are mysterious. Some of those episodes in the Sefer Toldos of Adam, the Medrash in different places even struggles to understand them. Like, why would it be that Yehuda would, would follow some woman on the side of the road at a rest stop? A truck stop. Like, why, why would he do that? Where did that story go? By Yehuda Yehuda Meitzachov, and and then you see another story about about how Yosef is at the mamish, the nadir, the bottom of the pit, and then all of a sudden he becomes the viceroy, like mamish, in ten seconds. It's like these are fantastic stories. There's so many twists and turns of the plot. It's 
it's dizzying. It's also sometimes a little bit, a little bit stomach upsetting, right? There are a lot of things that. So there's an Avastar of Nassim. The Avastar of Nassim is like a parallel to Pirkei Avos. And he says that when it says that the Roshan created Adam HaRishon, he created Adam HaRishon in a way that he was shakul, he was equivalent to Chol Maiseparatius, the entirety of creation. Or, like the Medrash in that same section of Barashas Rabbah, just a little bit earlier, it says, Bishal Shabara HaKadosh Baruch Hu es Adam Arishon. When God created Adam Arishon, Momo Kol HaOlam Kulo Gro'o. He created Adam Arishon, filling the entire space. Mi Mizrach Lamayra. What does it mean in the Medrash that God created Adam Arishon from the east to the west, filling the whole space? What it means, perhaps, is that this whole Sefer, from the beginning of time till the end of time, says Sefer told us Adam, from one end of the world to the other end, is actually, is actually encapsulated in Adam, in a person. Every person is a full Sefer told us for Adam. It's the entirety of history. Each one of us, Zeh Sefer told us Adam, each one of us is a Sefer told us Adam. And it's not just that you have a beginning of your life, a middle of your life, and an end of your life. It's not just that you have a story. Your story is because you are an Adam, a descendant of Adam Arishon, a miniature version of Adam Akadmon. So your story is the entirety of Sefer Toldos for Adam. It's the full gamut. There's an Israeli singer. He's very popular, and it's astonishing because he's popular all across Israel on every radio station, religious and primarily secular. His name is Hanan Ben Ari. You're not, you've heard of Hanan Ben Ari, great musician. He's like a modern day poet. He and Yishai Rivo are the two religiously influenced, spiritually inspired, you know, big time, you know, also Nathan Goshen. But so Hanan Ben Ari, he has a song, it's Kadai for his lyrics. He says, Gamani. I also drew like Yosi. The Gamo see some Lubavor. They also put me in the pit. He says, all the things that happen in history, they happen to me. I don't know if he knows this measure of Zen Sefer told us all but that's what he means. The Gamani, and he goes, I also had this, and I had that. You look at the stories of Tanakh, and you see these cataclysmic events, and every person in their own life, in their own safer, has moments of that type of crisis. So different people, <clears throat> Gamani says, Over Mabu, says, I also experienced the flood. I don't just mean like in our basement in Skokie, where Gamani, Over Mabu, Bechot Hashem. We go through Mashverim, Crises when we feel like we're in a pit, Gamo sees some Mubavor, but then we have triumphs. To realize that everything that it says in Sefer told us to Adam is my Sefer told us to Adam, I contain all of that. That's my story. The word Sipur and the word Sefer are the same thing. So the story is the book. The Sefer told us Adam is the Sipur. That's the story. What does he say? Uchmo David ani osem isem mizmor. Just like David Amelech, I make a mizmor out of my life. David Amelech, what is the safer of Tehillim? It's a safer of ups and downs, of triumphs and challenges and failures and rejection and rebuilding and reconnecting. It's exactly that safer told us to all of them. It's the full arc of his life with all of the vicissitudes and the great accomplishments. So Rabbi Nachman writes later in the Likuti Maran Tinyon in Ein Gimel, he's talking about Tshuva, and of course he's talking about David Amelech, who was established, who was taking Olash of Tshuva. He says, Shekol echad kefi mashuhu, every person, yachol limso es atzmo besok sefer Tehillim. We can find ourselves in the book of Tehillim. Gam aniyo semizem is more. Because some days we can find ourselves in the book of Tehillim of Asher Yosher Yisecha. We feel inspired, we feel at the top. 
And sometimes we feel like, we did something that we really should not have done, mamish. And the Navi, that little voice in our, our ear from our Neshama is telling us, no, no, it's passage. We find ourselves in that book, in that Sefer, because the Sefer of Tehillim, that full range of emotions and experiences, that's the Sefer told us to Adam. The time that we complained in the desert when we had what we needed, but we were looking, we were looking for a little more. It's the time that we stood at the mountain and we were really lit up, excited, on fire. The Sefer told us to Adam, we have it all. It's, it's in all of us. So Rabbi Nachman points out elsewhere, not here, which I did not realize, that the gematria, the numerical value of the word sefer, and the, mnemon, the numerical value of the word shame is the same. 340. I did the math just to check. What is a shame? It's your name, it's your identity, it's your sefer, it's your book. It's your story. So each one of us, there's a Nathan Alterman, who is a secular Israeli poet, Makola Dam Yeshem. Every person has a name. You have an identity. You have a Sefer. You have a Sipur. That's why Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Rav Salvechik, or Joseph B. Salvechik, explained Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is about telling a story because if you're unfortunately an Evid, you don't have your own story to tell. You don't have a narrative. You have really an other. But each one of us, Zez Sefer told us Adam, you have a Sefer, you have a shame, you have a name, you have an identity. And that Sefer, that told us Adam, it's going to be complex. Now we can understand perhaps why for Ben Azai, Zez Sefer told us Adam is the Klal Gadol in Torah. Because to look in the mirror and realize, I have a shame, I have a name, I have an identity, I have a Sefer, I have a book. And that Sefer is a Sipur. It's a story. But it's a Sefer told us to Adam. It's a Sefer that includes being at the bottom of the pit and includes standing looking at the land of Israel. It includes, you know, conquering Baal, inner demons, and it includes, you know, maybe some unflattering moments. It's all part of this Sefer told us to Adam. So we have to understand that we each have that Sefer. It's unique to us. We have our own shame and our own safer, but that safer, it's not just part of the, the continuum of Tolda Sa'adam. It's the whole Tolda Sa'adam. That whole safer Tolda Sa'adam of Mid Mizrak Lamar, the whole thing, it's within each one of us. We have it all. We have the Yaakov and Yosef and Yehuda and Ruben. We have all of it in our experience. And maybe that's why this. This process of going up and going down, of struggling, of moving back and forth. It's why the word safer has two other layers of meaning, perhaps. Because the word safer is the same word as the word spar, which means a border. So, for example, the Gemara says in Erevin that. If you have an ear that is on the spar, if you have a city that is on the edge of Israel, you have to take higher military and, and secure, security precautions because if enemies are able to breach the spar, the border, then the rest of the country is vulnerable. So it's not going to mean for El Shabbos and what you can do to save if uh, that village on the spar, on the edge, the word spar, samafe, it's like sof, it's the end. So sometimes your story, it feels like it's Malish at the end. It feels like the safer, it's over. It's at the Sfar, it's at the edge. But the word Saf also means something else besides Sof. Sof means end. Saf also means, it means a threshold. Which in a certain sense is actually a beginning. It's an entryway, it's an invitation. So your Sipur can be a Sof. You can feel like there is an end point here. I have to let go of something. 
And that might include mourning for something, mourning a loss. Because that so that far, that edge can be painful. Yaakov Vino, there was a chapter in his life where he was, he was bereft and he couldn't be consoled. There are chapters in life where lowly people feel, 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 feel very broken. But yet, even though at one moment there is that sof, but there's also the saf, that's also the gateway to something else. And Rav Kook talks about this, that how certain doors that close and crises that occur can open doors to something else in ways that maybe we don't appreciate or we don't see in the moment and we wouldn't wish on anybody, but they are not just a soap, but also a saf. And it shouldn't be discouraging because Zeh Sefer told us how Adam, the person realizes in their, own, in their own life, they're going through that, you know, that complex development. But that complex development, each time it's, it's molded gavar chadash. It births something new. So Yehuda somehow ended up with this woman. It's hard to understand what that was. But that, so that end of the way that we saw Yehuda as like the big prince, the perfect leader, yeah, that birthed the Melech HaMashiach. It birthed the capacity for Tshuva. So within that Sefer told us Adam, we see that something that might be perceived as a Sof is really a Saf because it's part of this greater plan, so that's number one. But number two, now we can understand, maybe, why the Torah wants to emphasize the Sipur of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Because it's crucial, the Rav wants us to know that of all the stories in the Chumash, we need to make sure that we have really, really leaned into the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, which at the end of the day is the story of us feeling trapped, feeling we're at the Sof, at the Yam Suf, at the Sof, at the edge of the water. We thought, Bo my nafesh. We thought we can't take it anymore. But the Roshan says, I'll, I'll take you one more step. It's a redemption story. And maybe the Roshan wants us to know that if all the Sefer told us to other that we have to tell our children, and more importantly, we have to tell ourselves, is the story that the Rebbe Shalom is carrying us of Asher Ga'olani. And Hashem Elokecha, Anok Hashem Elokecha, Shod Tzitzich HaMeret Yisrael, I took you out of Egypt, I'll take you out again in the future. It's the personal Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim that we need to tell ourselves. Of all the stories Hashem wants you to know, we're going to get all of them. But maybe don't get stuck on kind giving help, killing Hevel in your life. Maybe there's a moment of that. But that's not the big narrative. The big story is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Because Revolution carries us. Now we might not see the end of that story. <clears throat> that Savior told us all of them might take a long time to appreciate and to understand but that's, I think, what the Rebbe Shalom wants us to take away, because there are these conflicting things. And maybe that's why Rabbi Nachman said that mikol machlokas nasis sefer. From every machlokas, from every dialectic, emerges something new. Humeshivu metarif va'al yedeze al yedeze. Nishad Shim Etzlo Kamasvarim. Through this, several new books are written. Or what we would say now, new stages in the Sefer Todos Adam, of our Todos Adam, are being written. That friction, that challenge, that back and forth, which is a struggle, it actually perhaps gives a new opportunity. Somehow, it was through the challenge of Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim that we emerged as a people. How do we experience the story of Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim on Seder night? Through what mechanism? What's the mode? It's through asking and answering. She'elo and tshuva. It's through machlokas, so to speak. It's through that back and forth. And so, instead of seeing the Sefer told us to Adam of the last couple of years, which was so, for so many people, was so devastating and so difficult. We can realize that that Sefer told us to Adam is to be expected. It's to be understood that there are periods of famine and there are periods of, of plenty. 
And why that is, that's part of the ultimate mystery of the world. Why the Rosh had to put the Lila before the Yom. Why there had to be darkness before light. Why there had to be Mitzrayim before we had Geula. But somehow this Meitzar, this, and it's not before Pesach, but the word Matzah also means, I'm fascinated by the fact that many of the words mean opposite things, the same word mean opposite things for obviously important reasons. The word Matzah also means to, to squeeze out the essence, but it also means Matzos means like Mitzah means to fight, to struggle. So what we're saying is, Mikol Machlokas Nasa Sefer, our life is a book of Machlokas, of episodes that are kind and heva and that are Gitzias Mitzrayim, that are the Tlunos, the complaints of the Misonim, and the Maimon Har Sinai moments. That's our life. Ze Sefer Tolo Sa'adam. That's our story. We have a complete story. But Rabbi Nachman wants us to know that Mikomach Lokis Nasa Sefer. That becomes our book. That's what the Rebellion wants from us, is to write that book, to tell that story. That Sefer becomes our Sefer. And from that, we become part of this greater narrative. This Sefer told us other that the Rebellion saw me feel about so. And that somehow all of these challenges and all of these episodes are going to fit into something greater. And so maybe it gives us a little bit of chizuk to contextualize some of these episodes in life, to realize that Rabbi Nachman is telling us that from every struggle, from every setback, somehow we can make that into part of our Sefer, part of our Sefer, part of our story, to continue to write that story of Zez Sefer and Toldos Thank you all for coming. I invite you to continue to come back with us next week.